Hey guys, and welcome back to the Final Fantasy playthrough. Now that we have an airship, we're free to fly all over the world. We're like a deadly virus, except cool. Huh, not really sure I would call the Warriors of Light a virus, but whatever floats your boat, I guess. Well, let's think about all the things we did. We went and destroyed some undead man who was minding his own business in a cave. Uh, we destroyed a king. Who ha he didn't even have his subjects to defend him. We blew up a peninsula, and we killed the head knight, some innocent pirates. We're a destructive force, dude. We are making our name known across the planet. It's weird seeing a dragon in a dungeon, and you're not exterminating it with extreme prejudice. It's weird because they don't bring this back. Dragons are a friendly race. They're an intelligent race, and this is the only time you'll ever really see that. Dragons stick around in Final Fantasy, sure, but they are always enemies. They tend to be more powerful or even, like, secret boss-type enemies, but as a race of people, uh, Final Fantasy 1 is the only time they experiment with this whole dragon deal. And you do want to make note about them talking about the Castle of Ordeals and this trial they keep talking about. That's pretty much the focus of this part. Also, the... These dragons are super duper nice, like to the point that they make the dragons from Dragon Tales look like assholes. Like, you can just walk into their cave, take all their shit, bother them, like just keep talking to them, and the only thing they do is give you advice. They're so fucking friendly. Whenever I think of like dragons in terms of like cartoons and whatnot, yeah, Dragon Tales comes up, but there's also like that one, I think it was either a TV movie or like a special or two, where this one guy turns into a dragon and has to, among other things, learn how to fly. Um. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I just cannot remember the name of it. It sounds so generic that I can't even put a thought into what it could be. Mm. Yeah, the dragons have sort of an odd sense of interior design using skulls, but again, super nice. Yeah, yeah this is probably why, well, remember, history is uh, written by the victors. They also got, like, jugs there. I don't know. It's kind of cool. See, th they're even nice about us being nice. These are Canadian dragons. <laughs> At this point, like, I'm pretty sure if this game was more modern, they would be giving us items and shit. By the way, you, you mentioned Canada. I love what happens when you go to Canada in South Park, the Stick of Truth. Second time I'm bringing it up. You should play it if you haven't. Even if you're not, like, a big South Park fan, it's fucking great. Dude, keep it up. Like, I am all for whatever similarities you can see between this. Because think of this as sort of, like, the root of RPGs. And then, like... When you see them again in modern games, it just shows how good either a design choice or a mechanic was if it can hold out for over 20 years within a genre. Well, the joke was Canada is like outdated and whatnot, so when you go there, spoilers, obviously, it all turns like retro, like top down RPG ish. Yeah. One of the best things about this area, too, is that because this room is so fucking huge, you can hear more of Matoya's cave music. Sweet. Ah, uh, Bahamut. This guy, I believe he holds a title with three other characters in Final Fantasy for having appeared in every single main state, main series RPG, or he's in every single mainline Final Fantasy game. Those were the words. <laughs> you got there eventually, right? He appears later on as a summon. And he tends to be non-elemental, and his attack will most likely be Mega Flare. My personal favorite is the Final Fantasy X design, where he has, like, these rainbow wings, and he's got this giant wheel on his back. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty sick, actually. Yeah, it's badass. But, uh, in this one, he is just an NPC, and he's sending us on a trial to prove our courage. Which is pretty ambiguous, but it's supposed to be, because you're gonna see th the twist at the end... Why this test of courage is sort of a joke. <laughs> is this one of the friendly dragons? It looks pretty derpy. It looks like Barney, but orange. Hello, I like critical hits. Please hit me in the face. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm surprised we haven't brought that up. But the way critical hits in this game work is that um, every weapon has a, a critical hit number. It's not a percentage, it's a number. And the game will roll a number every time you attack. And if you get 
Um, I believe it's if you get above the number, you score a critical hit. Yeah. The thing is, is that it's sort of a linear progression in that number, to the point that we've already passed this point in the game, but nearly every hit is going to be a critical hit, because we're gonna always be rolling above that critical number. Sweet. And critical hits in this game are very useful. It's not like, oh, you do a little bit more damage. No, you will do like two, three times more damage. And doing that with every hit, it's badass. Now, you mentioned like bah Bahamut, Bahamut, whatever. And um, we were talking about, I think it was in the last part, like my history with Final Fantasy. If we're including like watching Let's Plays, I've seen 10 all the way through thanks to uh, Cloud8745's old FF10 Let's Play, so there you go. I actually really enjoyed the story and whatnot of FF10. That's probably the best part about FF10 is its story. Um, combat is very decent in that uh, the summons are so amazingly designed. Oh, yeah. Like, to the point that I've considered an Ifrit tattoo. Motherfucking Ixion. He literally drag him out of a pole, and boom, Thunder Horse. <laughs> and then is Anima. Oh, I love yeah. Anima. Seymour's theme, bitchin', by the way. The battle theme for that final fight? Oh yeah, Black Mages have a cover of that too. Yeah, yeah, in like ten years' time when we get to Final Fantasy X, so damned we'll be in the co commentary. <laughs> uh, so we actually needed the crown yet again. Hmm. To enter this trial, yeah. It's kind of weird, because I uh, can't really sequence break too much in this game, at least. Well, I say that, but there is a way to pretty much teleport to the final boss in Castle Cornelia. But, outside of that, the sequence breaking in this game is very minimal. So, I, it's kind of weird that they bring the crown back as a uh, requirement to enter this area. When you're gonna get it regardless, I mean, you needed it to be Astos. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't even really explain why he needs the crown. Like, I do see, oh, it's a castle, the crown is the key, blah, 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 but it is kind of weird that of all the items to make you use again, they would use the crown. Jesus, mud golems. You would think that these guys would have high defense, but it's actually the opposite. They have very high magic defense, and uh, they're super weak to physical attacks. Well, that makes sense, because it's, you know, it's just made of rock and whatnot, you can shatter rock. But he's mud, though, so it's all sticky. Mm, yeah, good point. Magic defense, because it's brought to life via magic, I guess? That makes sense. And you found a Greek god, the father of the Greek gods, actually. I found the Zeus gauntlet. <laughs> he was too busy from shagging everything with a friggin' pulse, so he just took a nap in a treasure chest. That is Zeus, in a nutshell, but the reason I got that is because I decided it's time to break the game. Okay. See, the thing about the spells, as I've said before, in this version at least, is that it's based off the cast per day, where you had to prep spells and you only use so many per level. Another thing that they brought over from Dungeons & Dragons is the idea that you can cast spells with an item. I know it's kind of weird to explain, but think of it that instead of using a wand to allow yourself to cast fire, the wand itself has the fire spell and it is casting it. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you kind of see it more in the gameplay stance, but what it does now is Cardo can now cast lightning as many times as he wants. Oh, yeah. He's casting lightning too. He can cast it without using any charges, and in later versions, he's casting it without using any MP. <sighs> nice. So he's using one of the best spells for absolutely free. I'm going to be using that pretty much every turn, because the item doesn't go away, it doesn't break, it doesn't wear off. Cardo now has infinite lightning twos. It just rain down lightning like a bloody god. I love it. Cardo is now the true lightning god. He is riding. Well, he works his magic with, like, graphics and whatnot, so it's all good. And if that wasn't enough, the heal rod does the same thing, but now Richie has infinite heal spells, which will heal a little bit of HP for everybody. Oh, stop it, Maxi! Stop it. It's too much. So I have turned Cardo into a thunder god, and I have turned Richie into a light god. Jesus. He is literally Jesus. Yes, Richie is Jesus, and Cardo is Raiden. Meanwhile... Tom and Helldragon are hitting things just <laughs> as hard as they possibly can. I I'm doing the best job I can, man. Give me a break. 
to be honest, you'll be doing just as much. You'll be doing the bulk of the damage. I mean, the physical strength of the fighters is so impressive, and it never dwindles. It never like peters off. It continues to be good and awesome for the whole game. Ah, uh, okay. I was wondering why there was just a random tail there, no boss. You, I was wondering why the D is zombie. Ooh. But the tail in later games is called the Rat Tail, and it's actually what we were going through this entire castle for. Also look at this. This healing is free. No MP, no magic charges, no limit. He heals everyone every turn. Wow, you fucking destroyed that zombie D. <laughs> I wrecked it. Pound it. <laughs> Pound the D, bruh. Alright, no, okay, alright, enough of that. Also, I like how chairs are the teleporter. I know they're thrones, but... I mean, they couldn't have come up with one more sprite. They have, like, so many different sprites in this game. They could have used something else as the teleporter. Uh -huh, I'm going bankrupt. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. At least they had enough money to pay for an awesome soundtrack. I'll give them that. But now we're going to backtrack all the way to Bahamu. I know this is probably a lot of people were questioning at the beginning of this playthrough. Is when is MBM going to do job changes? When is he going to get the class upgrades? It's now. I'm getting it as soon as possible. I am not up for doing a low class run. I am not putting it off. As soon as I can upgrade everyone's classes, I did it. I'm about to evolve? Yes, everyone is going to evolve their classes. Dude, what the hell is wrong with that cat man? He is a, he's got like a serious attitude on him. I'm just wondering where the rest of his body is. I know it's a perception dealio, but he looks so derpy. Like his hand is so teeny tiny. <laughs> well, it's like he's leaping at the screen. Well, what's he gonna do to me? I'm God, remember? Oh yeah, thanks. We'll just be down here as four plebs on the front lines. I already told you, you have Thunder Cardo and Light Richie. You're good. I'll just hit him with a what is essentially a stick, that's fine. Well, Richie over there is curing the lepers and Carter is raining down Thunderbolts. It's the way Final Fantasy was always intended to be, right? <laughs> and Hell Dragon's poisoned. I mean, come on. He can cure himself. <laughs> he can get he can get mad at the poison within him. Look at that. Even Richie can do hardcore crits. <laughs> My party is so good, and they're about to evolve later. Uh. And it's it's over out boost too. I mean. Like I said, if the fighter is supposed to be the offensive, all-armor, pretty bulky defensive fighter, when he job changes, same, only better. Neat. Same goes for the monk. High damage, low defense, but he still rocks it. Uh, the thief becomes a ninja, which I know that's the allure for most people. It's like, oh man, I get a ninja on my team, but he's not all that good. It's just... <laughs> he can equip a lot more weapons. He can equip as many weapons as the fighter, and guess what? He'll be able to cast low-level black magic. As you'd expect. Woo! But guess what? When the fighters upgrade to knights, they get to cast low-level white magic. Oh, yeah. Move over, Richie. Now it's my turn to be Jesus. Um... You're mostly going to be using just the white magic spells that null elements. Oh, son of a bitch. Also, put some fucking chairs or something in this room. There's so much wasted space. It's the geometry, and I honestly thought that the candelabras or whatever, I thought they made a design of something, because I know in Mother 1, the designs actually make a naked lady. Dude, I'm so buff. Also, what was that about naked ladies? <laughs> no, 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 let's go back to buff. Let's go back to being buff. <laughs> Yep, now that uh, Tom and Helldragon are knights, their strength went up, their intelligence not so much, but again, it does nothing. <laughs> Look at that really awkward sprite. <laughs> da -dum -da -dum. You have a comb over, dude. Because again, the first party member is also the field character, so we've been watching N Tom walk this whole time. Oh, God knows I need it. <laughs> but, okay, so I went over the knights, I went over... The monks become masters, and believe it or not, they actually are the only job upgrade that, I believe it's only originally, they actually have a debuff. I think it's, uh... One of their stats actually goes down in the NES version, but they fixed it later on so that there is no negative class upgrade. They are all beneficial and all OP as fuck. Okay, I'm kind of confused here. What's the difference between a monk and a red mage? 
A monk fights with his fist. He is a physical attacker. He has low defense, but he does high, high damage. He's the glass cannon physical class. Is he known by another name? Because again, I'm obviously not proficient with this game. He's sometimes known as the black belt. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of a running joke that you can tell when someone got into Final Fantasy if they call them monks or black belts. But yeah, they turn into masters, and they become more glass cannony. Again, if you have a monk black belt, don't give them weapons. They fight better with their fists. They actually get a damage and defense boost by not having a weapon. Can I just say, like, the, the juxtaposition of these two different kind of, like, art styles reminds me, again, of South Park, that one episode where they get weapons and everything. Oh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm actually doing a world tour. Now that Tom and Helldragon can cast low-level white magic spells, I'm just going to fill up their magic slots. Uh, when Rich and Cardo upgraded to Red Wizards, they also had more spells available to them. Because even though they can use black and white, the drawback is supposed to be that they can only use some of both. But when they become Red Wizards... It's to the point that they can cast all black magic, all white magic, except the final level spells. But I don't need those spells. Remember, Cardo has infinite thunder and Richie has infinite heals. So I can't take this seriously. Let's fight in love. You know what? That's actually my second favorite Japanese-ish South Park song. I much prefer Princess, Ken <laughs> Princess Kenny's magical anime girl theme song. It's the best. Uh -huh. I'm so glad they brought that joke back. I'm just glad that The Stick of Truth is a sequel to the Game of Thrones uh, trilogy episode dealio. That is a pretty good trilogy, actually. I might watch it after we're done here. Please do. It's honestly better research to commentate over Final Fantasy than honestly anything else <laughs> I can think of. Yeah. And yeah, I know we're going through a lot of spells, and I'm not explaining what a lot of them do, because I'm not going to use most of them. All you really need to know is that I'm getting elemental attacks, I'm getting some heals, I'm getting some spells that will negate certain elements, and that's it for the most part. Mm -hmm. Rich and Card are gonna mostly be using item-based spells, and Tom and Helldragon are going to continue to hit things. Uh, that is Final Fantasy. Mm, I like hitting things. I'm sure you do, <laughs> but I also need to organize everyone's gear too. I think I only picked up like one or two things, but it doesn't matter. I was gonna say, not equipping the gold. What are you, a pleb? And I think on that passive aggressive note, we shall leave things here for today. So we'll see you next time for more of the Final Fantasy playthrough. Bye bye for now.